one thing that I know about the future is that what's, what's happening around us and the rate of change being at an exponential rate with our linear thinking brain is very, very difficult, almost impossible to predict the future. And with that, the only thing I can do is sort of assign some characteristic to the future. So one thing I do know about the future based on what's happening around us is that the future will be personalized. When you look at what's happening with 3D printing and uh, additive manufacturing, we basically can imagine things that it would be very difficult to produce in mass. But now we can design those things and create it so we can have our own personalized fashion. But also not stopping there, we can look at our food supply. Our food supply will definitely change in the future. 3D printing actually will have an impact on so many different areas of our lives. But in, um, we can have our own food designed to our nutritional needs and to our individual taste. So we can have a lot of things that are personalized and not mass produced. We're not gonna stop there, and the, this work is actually happening today. We're going to be able to print organs, not wait for organ donors, but print organs with our own genetic material suited to our bodies if we need to have an organ replaced. But maybe we even have electively replace them because there are some people maybe like me who want to live as a 20 year old all their lives and they will have that opportunity like you take your car to the service, we'll take our body to a service and have parts replaced. And for those that maybe there are none in this audience that are coming up to need a, a hip replacement. But another aspect of the future uh, is that it will be augmented. With everything that's happening in the world of technology, with AI, with robotics, all the data available that was just talked about, we will have a way of uh, accessing information and interacting with our environment different. Uh, the human-machine interface is evolving continuously, and that will make us live our lives differently, learn differently, sleep differently, walk differently. We're walking with heartbeat monitors, hearing our heart, and doing things according to it. So our environment is completely changing around us. With robotics and AI, we will have robots take care of us, take care of our patients, take care of our loved ones. We will have robotic uh, pieces um, you know, added to our body, implanted, uh, maybe not like Borgs, but still helping us with some disabilities, will giving us strength and power where we may have lost it. And also helping us live uh, more independent lives, even if we've lost some functions in our body. But it will not stop there also. The same technology can be used differently. So military will use a lot of this technology to even fight um, uh, more unfair wars around the world. Now, coming to my favorite subject uh, about the future, space. Space will play a much bigger role in our future uh, as it did in the past. It's been there, it's sort of been in a sort of a pocket where, you know, government space agencies had a lot to do with it, but it's evolving. Private industries are now very much involved at, at the center stage of space technologies. We will have a chance to uh, actually travel to space, experience space uh, ourselves, and be able to play in space. Uh, up until now, maybe only about 500 human beings from the entire world, only 500 human beings have been to space, and only about 50 women. But in future, that picture will completely change. But also not because we want to go to space, which is important because it gives us a different perspective on our planet and our environment, but also because, you know, the way we're growing as species on this planet, we cannot survive just relying on resources on our own planet. We need to look outside. And the first place we're going to look at is space. And energy is a big need, and we can harness the energy of our sun in space where it's abundant and uh, green and uh, sustainable at least for, you know, hundreds of millions or maybe billions of years to come. Not only that, with all the data and the storage and everything we need to do, we can move manufacturing in space. We can put a lot of things where the harmful things that sometimes we do to our planet will not be here harming our planet directly. It will be someplace remote. And we will be able to manufacture, create new material, new medicine, new treatment in space. And all of that will lead to an opportunity for us to live in space, which is personally 
That's why I want to be a 20-year-old, so I can get there and be actually able to live in space. But in, uh, in living in space, we're going to start with nearby uh, areas, like our moon. We'll have a, probably a permanent base on the moon in my lifetime, and then move out from there and be able to learn about ourselves, about our universe, and sustainability. Because it's important not just for, from exploring and learning perspective, which is very important by itself, but also the way we're harming our planet, all the external factors that may some, at some point in time make our planet inhabitable. It's important for us to learn if we were to move off of our planet, will we be able to do it and how we would live. Of course, the technology developed from it will be useful you know, on everyday lives here. Another important thing about the future, that it will be all about individual power. Now we have so much computing power in the palm of our hand, you know, accessing data, accessing information. The device has a camera, a GPS, a, you know, so many different sensors. And on top of that, computing power that, you know, 50 years ago probably took a whole room at a university or, or a bank to, to, hard, uh, to, to house. Not only that, with the whole, um, you know, growth of the shared economy, we have everything we need at our power. So if you have an idea and you want to do something, you don't need to create everything from scratch anymore. Everything you need, all the resources you need to just make your idea to a reality can be leased, can be uh, obtained just as much as you need it because everything now is available as a service. You can even fund your idea through crowdfunding from people that you never met, you're probably likely to never meet, but from all over the world, they think you have a great idea and they're going to pitch in with $10 to $100 to $1,000 to give you your seed money when you need to start it. You don't need to go hire expensive resources. What you can do is find the best person to do the job you wanted for the duration you wanted. And again, all you need is your willpower and your idea and your dreams to make that come true. The future will all be about what imagine it, we will imagine it to be. So imagination plays a big role in it. And imagination, in my opinion, I value it a lot because I think it's the most unique gift we have as human beings. It's more important than any knowledge we gain at any university and any institution. And it's a unique gift that sometimes we take for granted. It usually starts with an idea, a spark of an idea because we saw something someplace or that we watched something because I'm a big Star Trek fan and that started a lot of my passion for space, and, and, or we, a book we read. And then soon enough we start imagining ourselves in those places we've never been or things we've never done. And soon enough we can make it come true. I'm from Iran, so I grew up you know, falling in love with the night skies uh, in Tehran. And I always wanted to go to space. And I thought as a child, you know, watching Star Trek, that I would grow up. And when I grow up, there will be a Starfleet Academy. And I will go and apply and become like Mrs. Spock and fly all over the universe uh, on board Spaceship Enterprise. Of course, none of that came true. I even drew how I'm going to go to space. And uh, later on, this is actually... Uh, the rocket that took me to space. So you can see I really saw what's going to happen. But I had to take the matter... <laughs> but I had to take the matter into my own hand. And I had to do everything in my power, use my resources. I was an engineer, an entrepreneur, and use everything that ha I had in my power and the resources I had around me and create that future for myself. But it all started with that imagination.
liftoff of the Soyuz rocket transporting Michael Lopez Alegria, Mikhail Turin, and Anushe Ansari to their microgravity home in space. a beautiful day and let us take the future in our own hands. Thank you.